Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a board-certified veterinary dentist, and I come to you every Wednesday bringing insights in veterinary dentistry to the veterinary and technician team and your dentistry service to make it the best that it can be and to get to that level of standard of care that we all strive to get to. And most of you are at that level or have reached beyond that level that are listening to the show, and we commend you for getting to that point or getting into that journey and, and striving to get to that, to that point. And th- this podcast or this show is actually one that is in commemoration of you, but it's kind of in the opposite direction of where you are and where you're going. And what I mean by that is we still have in our profession a large number of individuals that are performing anesthesia-free dentistry on their patients. So this episode is dedicated to you who are performing that excellent standard of care and doing all the things that you need to do to provide that. And then we're going to kind of counter that with the exact opposite when we are discussing anesthesia-free dentistry. So the standard of care in veterinary dentistry is outlined with the AVMA, with AHA's uh, protocol, is that veterinary practices should take full mouth radiographs of all patients and should be able to perform periodontal care, periodontal surgery, and surgical extractions. And again, most of you, if not all of you who are listening to this show, are getting there or are at that level. With anesthesia-free dentistry, we're way behind the curve to the point where we're actually, in some cases, causing harm. And I would go to the point of saying more often than not, we're causing harm. And one of the, one of the reasons I know that is because we see patients that have had that performance or that uh, procedure performed on the, the uh, patient for many months, consecutively, consecutively years possibly, and they come to us with severe disease. That's indicated by what? Dental radiographs. We can also see if we're doing probing correctly that we have changes even before dental radiographs sometimes. But dental radiographs tell us all that's there. And we see that a lot. And I know that you, in general practice, if you're taking radiographs, you're seeing those patients that have had that care for months to years and have severe disease. So we're missing more than we're removing. And when we're removing with anesthesia-free dentistry, we're removing possibly a little bit of subgingival calculus, uh, but we're not doing a good job because as you know, Uh, In the profession, there is no way for even us to think that if we were to go in there with the patient awake, even with our experience with with, uh, patients under anesthesia, that we could even come close to doing a good job. So it takes anesthesia and a still patient to get in every spot where that periodontal plaque and disease uh, uh, process is progressing. So with that, anything less than an anesthetic cleaning in a practice that's practicing the standard of care could be considered as detrimental or as non-helpful or as wasteful as anesthesia-free dentistry is in most situations. And what I mean by that, I'm going to take that a little bit further because, again, you guys, we we commend you for being here and listening to this because we know that you are at that stage where you're providing the standard of care. But at the same time, there there are practices, and you will be surprised to know there are more practices in all likelihood based on our experience that are not performing standard of care dentistry that are literally cleaning and waking the patient up. If there's mobile teeth and they're easy to extract, they're extracted. Otherwise, all the disease in between cleaning and extraction is there. They're just not 
picking it up and they're not resolving it so that it doesn't progress to bone loss or they're missing extractions that should be done because they're beyond periodontal care. So put that in perspective. Anesthesia-free dentistry is not good for the patient. It never will be. And if we're in general practice and we're just cleaning and pulling loose teeth, we're not doing much more than those practitioners of anesthesia-free dentistry do when they see patients and they do a wake removal of calculus and plaque. So keep that in mind. We never want to be in that situation where we're in a practice that is doing multiple procedures a day. And let's put that into a little bit more perspective. If, you are, if you're at the standard of care and you're performing dentistry procedures, especially on these small breed dogs, on a frequent basis, you know that it's very difficult to do more than three cases a day. Two cases a day can be two and a half to three hours in general practice if it's a small breed dog and 10 to 20 extractions, which is generally uh, one, of, one of the presentations that we see most commonly in general practice. So that, that two and a half, let's just say two and a half hours with 30 minutes between patients, that's, that's f five hours plus the 30 minutes between patients plus the 30 minutes to recover the last patients. That's six hours of your day right there for two patients. And if you're doing, again, dentistry the way it's supposed to be done, that is how long it takes to do surgical extractions, to get good x-rays, and to implement the proper care for those patients. So again, congratulations to all you guys who are listening to this, this show and continue to listen to this show. Our, our uh, hearts are out there for you for learning and taking the time to be on this lifelong journey to reach that point where you're, you're providing your patients with the best care that you can pro possibly provide. So hats off to you. And as always, we'll see you next Wednesday and provide as much value as I hope we've provided today. So thanks again, guys. Take care and we'll see you next week.